Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters. It's time for some classic European, where some of the best marks are on display right here. And you're about to see them on this week's episode of Classic Restos. The Mercedes-Benz Club New South Wales was formed in 1972 when a small group of nine Mercedes enthusiasts came together to form what is now the MBC New South Wales. Membership is now close to 700 like-minded people comprising approximately 2,000 registered Mercedes cars. Today showcases some truly remarkable and rare Mercedes-Benz cars within the club, with popular models being the 107s and 126 models. The Sydney German Auto Fest is Australia's pre-eminent German car event display for vintage, classic, exotic and motorsport enthusiasts. Five major German car brands and associated car clubs are here and include Mercedes-Benz, Porsche, BMW, Volkswagen and Audi. Of course the Mercedes-Benz Club New South Wales is the host and organising party of this grand event. This year's Sydney German Auto Fest will feature more than 400 pristine and desirable motor vehicles. Racing car veterans Jim Richards and Spencer Martin have set this day aside, typifying the enormity of this special European day. Out onto the field now. When you look up stunning in the dictionary, you'll find a picture of this car. How are you, Stephen? I'm well, thanks, Fletch. How are you today? Wonderfully well. This is fantastic. A 1958 300D Mercedes-Benz. It is stunning. Thank you. Very kind of you. Yes, it's a lovely vehicle. Um, the vehicle itself is stunning. It's elegant. It's a dream to drive, and it's a real, a real head-turner. There's lots to learn about these cars. It seems a little longer than usual. It's got a huge space in the rear. It's very opulent. What's the story with the car? They were the first return of post-World War II Germany to a real luxurious limousine. And the 300s, the D was the latter one, so longer wheelbase as you said in the previous 300s. They were commonly referred to as the Ardenauer Mercedes after Konrad Ardenauer, who had six of them during his tenure of Chancellor of Germany. And uh, you know, they really stood out. They were quite often sent to other diplomatic posts throughout the world, heads of states, few Eastern Bloc countries had them, but very much for Burgermeisters and what have you. An interior to die for, placement of uh, instrumentation, um, a little bit of timber up on the dashboard, of course the sumptuous leather. Yes. Beautiful car. They're beautiful, as you said, everything's appointed, very handy for the driver. These cars were both chauffeur driven and owner driver driven, and for 1950s technology they were second to none. Everything close by and handy and safe. Okay, now on the restoration side of things, Stephen, when was that done? Restoration occurred twice. I've had this car over 40 years now. Um, originally I did restoration some 35 odd years ago. So you've had the car 40 years? Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes, I was very fortunate. I purchased it in 1978 with my two siblings and um, since then, we've been, I've been the custodian of it. Stephen, it's, it's a family heirloom. This, is, this, yes. this, this car, well, it is part of your family. Certainly, yes, it has been. And uh, you know, my kids, my brothers, my parents, uh, it's, it's well known in the club and everyone knows that, gee, you know, yeah. one car for 40 years is a long time. Well, it is, and I think that goes for, uh, I guess it's a bit of a loose term, because every classic car is, is a part of people's families. The it's the attachment that we get to these cars. And um, I think it's, it's a beautiful thing to have. It's a great attachment to have because it's the old story, no matter what brand you're into, they're not making them anymore. They don't. They're a one-off. Everyone has its own patina, its own charm, its own amount of individuality. And the people who own them put their love and their effort and their time and money into these cars and at the shows. Well, how's this for a feature, Fletch? Comfort, armrest and luxury. You have your cocktail cabinet here, the rear of the 
rear seat. They've got decanters, three of them. They slide there comfortably. And the glasses, you pop up the armrest, and here we have your glasses. All lovely German crystal, yet still functional as an armrest. Good on you, Stephen. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Love to see you again. Yes. All the best. Absolutely. And uh, first cab off the rank, pardon the pun, uh, in terms of Mercedes, an interview uh, on this glorious day here, the uh, 2018 Sydney German Auto Fest. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks again, Fletch. All the best. With me now, race legend Jim Richards. How you doing, Jim? Great, Fletch. No problem. That's good. It's great to see me. It is great to see you. Haven't seen you for a while, actually. <laughs> uh, it's good to see you flying the uh, flag once again for Shannon's. Oh, no, no. We've had a, a great relationship over the years. We've been together probably for 11 years now. Yep. We're level pegging, Jim. It's about the length of my association with them as well. Oh, terrific. Good that stuff. It is. Now, Jim, you've flown up from Melbourne this morning. We've got a great day here in Sydney. Uh, so far, your thoughts on this day? Fantastic. I've already been over to the BMW uh, boys and signed a few cars and that because I, I did uh, sort of drive for BMW for about six years. But uh, yeah, no, the Porsches, the BMWs, um, I've, I own a couple of myself, so yeah. it's great. And the Benzes, fantastic. What, what are the ones that are most passionate? I mean, I've got a soft spot for some of these Benzes out here. You look at their lines, you look at the way they're made, the style of them of the era. They're, they're just so nice. No, they certainly are. You could say probably the Benz is a, bit, is, is a little bit more sophisticated, you might say, than, than, the, than the Porsche and the BM, because... Uh, I know Benz still have uh, you know, track days and stuff as well, but the, with Porsche and BM, they're sort of probably more into the track days. Yes. But the passion for all of them is, uh, is equal. I mean, you know, everyone loves their cars. What I like about talking to someone like yourself, you've, you've driven over the decade such a transition of different vehicles from the big bang of V8s through to your Euro. Uh, and I guess they've all got their accolades in different areas, correct? Oh, they certainly have. I mean, I've, um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of not a, as you should say, a one car driver. I've, uh, you name it, and I've, I've almost surely raced it, yeah. um, and, and in lots of different disciplines, in rallying, speedway, circuit racing, single-seaters, you know, touring cars, sports sedans, everything. So, Jim, how was the association? Did you enjoy it with BMW? Oh, I certainly did. I started driving for uh, Frank Gardner's team then, which was sponsored by JPS Cigarettes, in 1982, and uh, I was with BMW until... 88 yep. and in that time we won the endurance championship in the 635 we ran the touring car championship in 87 we run the uh, little m3s yep. and we won the championship then as well so terrific memories of those days and uh, that was when the group a era was out so every, every manufacturer had a car that they could compete in mm. so there was a variation of different different models and different types of cars around the mid mid 80s changing times it was quite incredible in the in the racing sector then wasn't it no well it was and um, of course Australia went from you could say um, the group C regulations to group A yeah. which is an international yeah. class where the group C was just an Australianized class yeah. so the 80s were and especially towards the middle and the end of the 80s were um, probably some of the best days that I've ever had you know it was just terrific and then to the likes of uh, Freddie Gibson with, with Nissan, uh, he did well there, didn't he? Well, no, he 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 came and uh, stole me off BMW, to be honest, and uh, um, and uh, I drove the Skyline, and, and we, 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 I was with, with Nissan for uh, four years, and uh, we won the Touring Car Championship in the Nissan, and uh, and had a great relationship, really, really good. And I still see Fred to this day. He's a great guy, terrific guy. Yeah, we we have uh, lunch probably once a year, which sounds like a long time, but we, we see each other probably once a month. That's awesome stuff. And uh, then Porsche came along for you then, Jim? No, certainly, yes. I, um, I never really had an interest in Porsche uh, until I got to drive with Peter Fitzgerald in a 968 Club Sport at the Bathurst 12 hour. And I said to Pete, I said, um, uh, have, you, have you prepared the car? Has it all been, been good? He said, he said well, it, 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 won, it, it ran last year's 12 hour. Yeah. And we haven't done anything to it, oh, except the brakes and tyres, of course. Yeah, yeah. And I drove it, and I was in instantly in love with them. They were just a brilliant car. Yeah. And then went on to the 911 style of cars. And well, they're, they're so purpose-built for the twisty stuff, aren't they? Well, they certainly are. But a, but a Porsche, you can you can thrash around a track for a whole day, uh, go on a competition, and then drive to the supermarket. Yeah. <laughs> Jim, whenever we catch up, it's great. Thanks again, mate. Really enjoyed the interview. Thank you. Pleasure, Fletcher. No problem. My passion for cars began when Nana and Pop bought their new Toyota Crown. It was Nana's, really. She loved that car. 
We went everywhere in it. My passion now is just the same, even though my cars are a little different. I've still got Nana's car, couldn't part with it. And I reckon if she was here today, she'd be insured with Shannon's too. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. In 2019, why not consider a Detroit tour with Fletch? Detroit, the automotive epicenter. It will leave you gobsmacked. Imagine experiencing where automotive history on a grand scale began. Stay in fine accommodation, taking in some of the best museums and private car collections on the planet. Book your 2019 Detroit tour with Fletch. 1300 146 392. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. How would you like to double your garage space and work on your cars easily? Well, bring in your own hero with a Lift King hoist. Easy to install models in one, two and four post styles. Check the very nifty Spider 2500 portable mini scissor lift. Hero hoists are either Oz certified or carry the Euro CE, your guarantee of quality construction and reliability. I regularly stand under my Lift King, so when you need a bit of a lift, why don't you go stand under yours? Time now for an absolutely delightful 1962-190 SL Roadster. How are you, Simon? Having a great day. Thanks very much, Fletch. No, a tremendous day today. You'd have to be having a good day. Some of the biggest marks of German manufacturing are here today. Absolutely. We've got Porsche, V-Dub, Audi, the odd, even the NSU, and maybe even a Messerschmitt. I'm not sure. This little car behind us... Uh... It's beautiful. It really is. Uh, I think it's one of those cars that just makes you feel good when you look at it. It does. Look, it puts a smile on your face when you drive it, and it puts a smile on the face of people around. The kids will smile at you through the passenger windows. Even the truckies will look down and give you a bit of a grin and a thumbs up. It's an absolute pleasure to drive and very contemporary. Now, it's not always about horsepower. We're looking at a 1.9-litre engine here, mm. but it's the shape of the car. It's almost like the power doesn't even come into it because... Just sitting here like this, it's just a beautiful, feel-good car. But back in 1962, how was that size engine looked upon in this sort of a car? Did it, did it run quite well for what it was? Look, absolutely. It had a top speed over 100, 100 miles per hour. Um, it cruises today at 110 kilometres uh, quite easily, yeah. albeit about 4,000 RPM, so it's noisy compared to modern cars which might be cruising at 2,000 revs. Sure. But it certainly keeps up with the modern day traffic and that's what makes it such a great classic car to own because you can actually use it regularly. Tell us, Simon, what this car means to you. Why do you love it so much? How long have you had it? What have you done to it since you've had it? Well, I mean, I've had it 10 years, um, and it's just been a pleasure to own for that time. Um, if you like and appreciate older things, then having a hobby like this where you can acquire little bits and pieces, start to bring it back to original and then enjoy the fruits of your labour, yeah. it's just tremendous. And, of course, with the values going up, the investment you make is actually, you, you can get it back these days. Yeah. So that, that means you can spend as much money as you want. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all, all the wives out there agree with that. That's it, exactly. Right. Isn't it lovely, though, as you mature through life that you, your interests and your, I guess, uh, your passions can change and the cars that you might look at today, you didn't look at the same way 20 years ago. No, that's true. I mean, sometimes classic cars and classic shapes take a little while to, to actually become a classic and yeah. I mean, Subaru is a good example of that too. I used to think they were <clears throat> quite ugly, but now you go, you know what, that absolutely suited yeah. that mark at the time. Love the car, it's, uh, yeah, it's just, it's sitting beautifully here in the paddock. Um, I, I love the interior, uh, the, the colour is gorgeous, I like how you've left the wheels standard, it's just one of those cars that, uh, well, yeah, it just speaks for itself. Thank you very much, Fletch. All right. Thank you. Cheers, Simon. All the very best. Thank you. If you have a classic, it just has to be with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646 or visit shannons.com.au because Shannon's shares the passion. With me now, another race car legend, Spencer Martin. How are you, Spencer? Yeah, good, Fletch. Very good, actually. Hey, mate, what are you thinking of the day? 
I can't believe the amount of cars that are here and uh, I can't believe the standard. Uh, I mean, these cars are like better than you. Unbelievable, aren't they? Absolutely. Spencer, you've had a, a very interesting career uh, witnessing racing in the, in the 50s and I'm led to believe you got your first opportunity around 1960. Uh, yes, yeah, I had my very first race in 1960. Uh, it was a little car that I built myself and uh, it wasn't very fast but then again uh, I put it all together and um, a few people noticed it, yes. Good on you. I think uh, one big accolade for yourself is when you defeated Norm Beachy. That was, a, that was an awesome effort. Well, yes, actually we, um, I had a, uh, an FX Holden, they call it FX now, but uh, the car belonged to Joel Wakeley and um, was entered under the Boomerang service station and uh, we had 20 races in that and we won 17 and uh, we demolished Beachy and uh, um, he was driving for Scuderia Veloce at the time which right. was David Mackay's team yep. and um, so it was, uh, they didn't believe that our car could be standard so they had the scrutineers check it and uh, they found out it was all legal and uh, so David invited me to drive for him then. And Spencer, it was David Mackay that gave you the opportunity to race in the Armstrong 500 back then, I believe. Yeah, well, that was after uh, my success in the early model Holden in the FX. He invited Brian Muir uh, to come back from England. Brian was driving in the British Touring Car Championship, and he invited Brian back. And uh, uh, so, um, well, I actually put the car on pole position, and, uh, and Brian broke it. <laughs> Spencer, what, what were those early humpy Holdens, which I have a lot of respect for. Yeah. They, well, Australia's own car, yeah. the beginning of our legacy. But what were they like back then? I mean, I know that you, maybe you had some wider steel wheels you could have thrown on them, but you, you didn't really do a hell of a lot to them, did you? No, well, you weren't allowed, the regulations were you weren't allowed to uh, modify them very much. You're allowed to put wider wheels on them and modify the brakes, but you had to keep the original drum brakes. So, you know, you had drum brakes, uh, three on the tree and the gear change. Um, you weren't allowed to, uh, you're allowed to modify the head, but um, you're allowed to remove metal, but you weren't allowed to add any metal to them. And uh, so we had, um, uh, what did we have? We had 150 horsepower out of it, which was not by today's standard, it's not very much at all. But when everybody's got the same horsepower and the same wheels and tyres, then uh, that evens it all out and it was very exciting racing actually. Well Spencer, it's the first opportunity I've had in the history of Classic Restos to interview this guy, Spencer Martin. Thank you Spencer. Good, thanks Fletch. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. With me now, Greg Vaines, the Vice President of the Mercedes-Benz Club of New South Wales. How you doing Greg? Very good. I'm just excited today. Uh, this is a uh, phenomenal event and it's just gone from strength to strength each year. The, uh, the last count we had about 445 cars here at Golf Whitlam Park. Um, a great a range of Mercedes-Benz, BMWs, Porsches, Audis and Volkswagens. Classics, modern cars and we've got lots of just spectators around here as well. It's just been amazing. Now over the years, as the time the show has evolved, more and more classics coming out of the either pulled from sheds or out of panel shops being restored. What, what's what's the trend there with these European cars? Uh, look, they're, they're, we have within the club, within the Mercedes-Benz club, we have a mix of uh, very old vehicles. Typically they don't come out. We have to persuade some of the owners to bring those out. Um, but as you can see here today, there's a, there's a broad range of cars from the, from the early 20s right up through to um, the early uh, 2000s. Tell us, Greg, the Mercedes-Benz Car Club of New South Wales. Sitting with members, you're on the increase. It, it is a growing club. It is. We uh, we have a membership approaching 600, and we've seen a significant increase, uh, particularly the last uh, uh, two years. One was the change when um, historical plates, uh, uh, historical plated cars, could have log books, so uh, people could then use their car, the historical plated car, more regularly. And we've been able to. Um, uh, introduce some new things like a motorsport division you know to compete with BMW and with uh, with Porsche so we're getting a lot of younger members too yes. but we do cater for all age groups so there's a lot of 
uh, older members, middle-aged and the younger guys coming through. Okay, now you want to contact the club. Website, how do people get in touch with you, Greg? Oh, look, there's the Mercedes-Benz Club New South Wales website. There is also a website for the Sydney German Auto Fest. Uh, there's a few contact details uh, there, but uh, very, uh, you're very easy to get in contact with us. Now, it's been mentioned a few times today on the episode about all the car clubs getting together, pulling together for this day, and uh, you've been an integral part of that. So, well done, Greg, for 2018. Uh, here's looking for next year, mate. Thank you, Fletch. Really appreciate it. And th thank you for coming, too. That's all right. Yep. My pleasure. Okay. Every weekend around Australia, motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people. All sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts. So when it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. In 2019, why not consider a Detroit tour with Fletch? Detroit, the automotive epicenter. It will leave you gobsmacked. Imagine experiencing where automotive history on a grand scale began. Stay in fine accommodation, taking in some of the best museums and private car collections on the planet. Book your 2019 Detroit tour with Fletch. 1300 146 392. If you have a restoration project, Hair and Forbes has the tools that you need. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits, and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Heron Forbes has the range. Martin's Panel Masters has three modern accident repair centres. They service Melbourne's inner, outer east and the fast growing south east corridor. Your vehicle will receive the best from state of the art repair equipment finished beautifully from computer based paint mixing systems, finished in Australian compliant spray booths. Martin's Panel Masters, located at Ferntree Gully and Berwick, also Box Hill Panels. Time now for a little bit of class, a little bit of sophistication. How are you, Eros? Very well, thanks, Fletch. That is great, mate. When I see your car, a 1968 Pagoda, it's all glass. The visibility must be amazing driving this car. Oh, it's fantastic. It's even better with the roof off. So how cool. You've got best of both worlds going on there. Exactly. So, Eros, tell me, where does Pagoda come from? What does that mean? Well, it comes after the Thai roof, you know, pagoda roof. So if you look at the roof on this, how it's got that concave shape, uh, that's where it gets its nickname, the pagoda. And the reason for that was uh, the Mercedes designers to make it easier for you to get in and out of the car, so they sort of curved it up. Getting back to the glass and letting all the light in, ha see inside uh, how, how bright the car is. It just It's like as though you've got permanent spotlights just showcasing the interior. Yeah, but it's great for visibility too, for when you're driving. You, know, you haven't got no blind spots. Yeah. Uh, like modern cars, you know, you've got a lot of blind spots. For it's kind of like a design a little uh, ahead of its time, right? Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And how does it perform? Surprisingly, it drives very well. It, you know, for a car you know, that old, it yeah. drives very well. Um, obviously, not like modern cars, but I, I enjoy driving. But once upon a time, this car was modern. Yeah, yeah. So. And, you, and you would have been, you know, pretty well high up on the, on the, in the tree on the road driving this car. Well, of course, you would have. Yeah, yeah. compared it to the old uh, D-type Jags of the era. Yeah. yeah. So. I still think, though, with an older car, it's it's all in how you keep them, how you maintain them, throw a few dollars at the suspension, get them back yeah. to how they were, because you can get old cars driving incredibly well. All right, Eros, good on you, buddy. Thank you, Fletch. Thank nice you. talking to you. Yes. Thanks for your time here today as well, and thanks for bringing your car along, OK? You're welcome. Thank you. Cheers. OK, time now for a line of serious Luxo barges by Mercedes-Benz. How are you doing, Mike? Very well, Fletch. Nice to meet you. Yes, likewise. Yourself. How are you? Are you having a good day? It's been a good day. been a long day, but we're here, and yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> now, Mike, apparently you're the uh, custodian looking after these three incredible Mercedes-Benz cars, correct? That's correct, yes. Yep. I get the uh, the joy of looking after them, repairing them, and, and getting 
to the shows and things like that, so yes. What's the size with these? I thought it was only the Americans who got criticised for building big motor cars. Well, I think um, back in the, the, the early 60s, Mercedes had a, a decided to build something that would rival the, the American and slash Rolls-Royce market, and um, they, they wanted to build a car that was massive and, and would be grand in all its way. See, the big car makes a statement, and it doesn't get much better than that, especially when we look at these three cars here. It's the first time I've seen three Mercedes Benzes in a row like this, let alone one. We're talking a car that's uh, pretty well six metres long, uh, mid-60s as you've alluded to. The luxury end of these cars is amazing. I'm astounded to hear that all the power features are in fact... They're all hydraulic and uh, yes, that makes for interesting uh, expense but also it works very very well. I must say the the dashboard layouts in these mid 60s Mercedes beautiful. Uh, nothing is overdone, everything's functional, everything's practical, um, an extremely smart looking car. I would agree with that yep I think a lot of it was built for you know it was you know, very very wealthy people you know you didn't uh, you, the mum and dad weren't buying one of these for, for an everyday car to park in the suburbs it was always uh, diplomats um, big dig dignitaries, um, so it was designed for people that wanted practicality but wanted the best. What powers this up front? So we've got a 6.3 litre V8, uh, fuel injected, um, it was at the time one of the very fastest production cars uh, when it first came out. In terms of ride, again getting back to the weight of the car, Mike, they must just uh, float along nicely? They do, they're all airbag suspension, so it is just like an armchair coasting along it. it honestly, the, the, the ride, you have to experience it, no one can, uh, no one can un sort of describe describe it other than the closest I can say is you're sitting on your, your couch at home and you're floating through the traffic. Seat wise Michael in, in terms of uh, bolster although there's not a lot of bolster that we see in the seats but uh, ability to comfort you what are the seats like? All hydraulically adjustable front and rear. So. Back, back to the man with his hydraulic pumps you know try, checking the fluid levels. Have they, They've got where's the reservoir for all these little, pu all these little uh, pumps? Well, there's a pump in the engine bay with the reservoir obviously and it it's basically goes right through the whole the, from start to, to finish from front to back right through the whole car. So it's the one reservoir that, that services all the pumps? Yep, the, the, the pump does the one pump, one reservoir and it does everything. Awesome stuff. Michael thanks for sharing these cars. I, uh, I've seen them lined up here when I got here this morning and thought to myself wow I've, I've never actually uh, interviewed anybody with, with cars such as these so uh, they they are outstanding. Uh, again the bright work around the glass stunning in every way. Of course we're back to this Mercedes build quality again. The doors are heavy, they close nicely. Uh, even, they're hydraulic. even they're hydraulic, Fletch. Mm. The doors are hydraulic. They suck closed. You just you put it to the first latch and they'll suck closed for you. Tell you what, Mike, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want your leg hanging out, would you? <laughs> no, it'll take it with it. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay, cheers, Michael. Pleasure, Fletch. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Thanks for being on today's show, mate. Thank you. Well, there you have it. Great people and a magnificent event. You have seen just some of the 2018 Sydney German Auto Fest and you've seen it first on Classic Restos. And as I say at the end of every episode, episode of the show. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hair and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters.